Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 14th of June 2022. Um, so we have uh, the attendees myself, Damien Duportal, we have Hervé Lemur, Mark Wade, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Berarten. I always fail to remember your handle. What are you? Or Gunzar in uh, GitHub, whatever. Um, that will be. I, I will do it by myself. Don't worry. Um, oh, cool. It's putting. Okay. Uh, first thing first, announcement. The weekly process went well this week. Hey. <laughs> That means that all the, the work that uh, Basil and the uh, team did last week is reused. So uh, good thing. Uh, I assume that the, there is a checklist that should be run later today. Just before the meeting, I started the job on Trusted CI to build a controller image for this re release. So going well. Checklist to cover. No error this week. Um, second announcement. Uh, we are currently facing, since at least two days, uh, an incident, major incident, on repo.jenkinsci.org. So the artifactory instance for hosted by Gfrog. It caused a different kind of issues, contributor are having issues to download dependencies when trying to build plugins. There are jobs that are slowed down on CI Jenkins IO, but also all the release jobs, security jobs, all the container building, everything that involved the code to repo Jenkins CI is slowed down. Uh, as always, we have contacted them, maybe a bit late this time. Uh, yesterday we decided to, it was just punctual. It wasn't blocked or it was usable. Today it isn't. So we contacted them today as soon as we saw that it started to be used. Um, thanks Stefan and Hervé for opening the status to communicating on the users uh, about that. That's all on the announcement for me. Do you have other announcement folks? Okay, so let's get started. Uh, a lot of work has been done during the past iteration. Um, I will try to go uh, as fast as possible. We have some usual, uh, let's say, day-to-day -day maintenance tasks. Uh, Basil has been removed uh, from some plugins that he doesn't maintain anymore. So thanks, Tim, for that. Um, we were able to install the latest version of the Kubernetes plugin on CI Jenkins IO, which features uh, the fix for when suddenly you have to spawn a lot of pods at the same time that was creating some locks and some uh, and was slowing down or sometimes locking completely the, the cluster. But that's one of the part of the out big outage on CI Jenkins IO two months ago. Uh, we have corrected the root cause since then, but that one was amplifi amplifying the, the steps. So I hope that will consume less resources when we have a bomb build. So far, no more issues. So if you see anything on CI Jenkins IO with a lot of pods, agents that are in weird state locked or something, don't hesitate to mention that ticket or reopen it. For the contributor who did that, S. Bollier, Thanks very much for the work on that, and thanks, Vincent. Um, HTTP permanent redirect, so that one seems to be solved. It involved different changes between the different provider, but as far as I know, now it works as, uh, as expected. Is that correct? That's correct as far as I know. I've submitted one more pull request, this one uh, to, Jenk to www.jenkins.io that replaces Jenkins is the way.io with stories.jenkins.io for each resolvable URL. That way the only remaining broken URLs are Jenkins is the way.io. And I'm working with Alyssa Tong and Gavin Mogan to try to find the content 
that is missing that would would resolve those links. Some cool. of the content was intentionally deleted. Some of the mm -hmm. content may just be missing because we didn't get a copy. So I've, I'll work continue working with them. I think that that ticket being closed is the correct thing. Makes sense. So many thanks, uh, Mark, for managing that during the conference. Thanks, Hervé, for the work you put that. And also thanks, Tim and Alisa, for also the all the tasks you did on that. Um, issue about last weekly last week weekly release that failed. We had to burn two numbers. So it's more an audit of the issues that we met. Um, to summarize, we did too much changes at the time. We removed absolutely GDK8 from the build of that weekly. And we also upgraded the image to Ubuntu 22.04, which had a lot of side usages. The takeaway for the infra team is that part of the release build is done remotely on the machine pkg.jenkins.io. You know that machine that also hosts the update center on AWS that we can't upgrade anywhere. The reason, as explained by Olivier, is because one of the two between Debian packages or Red Hat packages, in order to add new packages and update the index, it needs the file from the previous one, which means even if you, add, if you have the tool create repo on a container that runs somewhere on release CI Jenkins IO, you need a way to retrieve the gigabyte of files already present on production, have them accessible locally, run the HUD on that one, and then copy back these files. It's not that much a problem. We could have a caching file system on the release environment and rsync on one side and then rsync on the other side. But we have to do this in order to decouple the release process from that machine. So right now, Tim, uh, remove the create repo tooling from the container since we don't need it. So no false expectation and we will add it back. But that means that for contributor, you cannot build all the packages of a Jenkins if you are not uh, with an access to that machine. Um, Since the package build is a assigned package, you already couldn't build a fully signed package, right? Because the the signing the signing key is is deeply privileged. We don't want to give that to anyone. Co correct. Um, by default, the release process has a Dumi key, a JPG key that everyone can get access to, which allows to sign, but it's not recognized by the usual uh, certificate provider for the packages. What you cannot do is, once you have generated a package, update a local history. You don't have all the, the tooling that we use for doing that, even from scratch. Um, what could we do about that? That means uh, being able to either do it on, as part of the release process. So there are solutions in that area. Team is aware of that, but no action required for us for now because we focus on moving update center out of that machine somewhere else. And then we can start discussing the future of that machine. Do you have any other question about last week release? No, thank you very much to everyone who was involved in getting it done. Yep, that was a long, long running oh, process and everyone helped, everyone. I take it back. There is one open question that Daniel Beck just raised. I think it's related to the upcoming security release that will be 2.346.1, 2.332.4. He asked mm -hmm. re relative to, have we switched from building with Java 8 to building with Java 11? And I, ah. I think the answer there is yes. And does that affect or does that place a risk on the security release that he's trying to do? Uh, so for the security release that shouldn't, in the sense that, uh, so Daniel cooked that. Uh, so what happened is that after the weekly release, um, I worked on backporting the changes we did on the weekly branch to two pull requests on the release repository. Um, there is one to the 2.332 line, and there is the twin sister to the, to the next LTS that should happen in September. Um, so the, it's okay for the other, as expected, because that is from the same weekly. And if I'm 
correct the not that line but the other line should be should drop java 8 by default no that so 2.346 no. yes drop java 8 it's not until the september release which will probably be 2.60 mm, okay. 360 something okay so we also have to roll back these changes oh that yeah that one is tricky Okay, can I ask you to open an issue on the release repository for me, Mark, on that topic? Yes, will do. So what happened is that for the current uh, LTS line 2.332 that Daniel uh, is asking question about, that line will be the, uh, will have a security update, a dot two, I think. Dot, so dot four. Dot four already, okay. And so in order to have this security release, we have to backport to uh, roll back some changes. We fixed the image to the latest that still contain both GDK 8 and GDK 11, which in turn, we need to add back that path because GDK 8 is the default on that machine. So the pod, the pods that are starting that trigger the release we need to specify the binary, the Java binary used to start the agent because it must be GDK 11 like on the controller, right. while Java 8 keeps the same, the default for building. And also I had to roll back the OpenSSL changes we did due to the Ubuntu 22 change, which embed OpenSSL free. While on that image, it's still OpenSSL one or two, whatever. Right. Um, so I assume I will have to do the same kind of rollback on the other LTS line. And we can ask a team, Alex and I, to pay a beer to the others because the three of us validated my pull request <laughs> while it shouldn't. No, th th thank you very much for that work you've done. And we just want to be sure we that the security team understands as well. Thanks. Okay, so we've got more to do. I'll create that issue. Thanks. We really rely on this issue to not forget these backports then. That's clear for everyone? No question? Okay, uh, thanks survey for dropping the dependency of AMG. So now we use a fully fledged Docker machines everywhere instead of uh, IMG. Uh, so no more maintaining that part. Great job, that wasn't the easiest one. Uh, thanks Stefan for working on bootstrapping a new Terraform project for the Oracle Cloud maintenance. While I'm there, uh, so we have now two um, child tasks, one which we will see later. There is one that I want to take uh, will, that will import the existing resources. Mark, we saw with Stefan that we have three machines, we have archives. There is one with your name that I assume you are using for testing Jenkins on IRM Ampere system. Uh, do you know what the third virtual machine is for? Do you remember? I suspect it's also a test machine that I use, but I'll happily connect in and, and double check. Okay. Uh, because do you mind stopping it and deleting it if it's not used anymore, or at least stopping it to not consume credits? Because with the update center that should migrate on that area, we will start to be on an area where, um, yeah, uh, not too much machine at the same time, I will say. Okay, yes. Uh, uh, unless I'm, you have a use case, and in that case, well, I'm, I'm quite confident it's being used, but I'm okay. happy to switch it off. I, I use it, I believe I use it to check that we're portable to Oracle Linux, but that's a relatively cool. low risk, low risk no. check that I can shift elsewhere. No problem. We can otherwise just open an help desk issue and we can start documenting the presence of this machine. We import it on the Terraform and that will be part of the, of the process. Okay. Um, the precision warning in packaging pipeline. I don't remember at all. Uh, oh yes, that's a minor change uh, we did on the release pod template. Uh, you can look at it, that's really minor. I memory runners failed to come online. So thanks Alex for opening that. There were issue uh, 10 days ago and last week about the high memory virtual machines that are ephemeral agent on CI Jenkins IO, mostly used for uh, test harness of Jenkins core, usually, and some builds. 
Um, these machines were completely blocked and locked. Um, so team did a, a revert of a, a recent feature on the Azure VM plugins. And also we were able to fine tune the configuration of the plugin on all our instances so that the Azure machines are immediately throw away, throw away once a build have used them. That was already the case for EC2, but not for Azure. So now they all have the same behavior and we haven't seen any more issues. The reason is because the feature that team had to roll back was for the case of when you have used the machine, you wait sometimes before stopping it, just in case another build come and you, you will want to reuse it. Not only we don't want that, we, we want the machine recycled immediately. We don't want reusability. And in that case, the bug was triggered when you were waiting a few minutes. That was creating some locks on the garbage collector of the machines. So thanks, Tim, for that. And thanks, Stefan, for the, for the help on that area. Um, one issue has been closed as not done. I don't remember why the sign off on web based commits. Hervé, can you remind? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was about uh, recurring, recurring uh, sign off commits. Uh, so, commits done via the web UI could be automatically signed. But as Tim just said, uh, um, it can be activated uh, per repository. So as uh, there is only one, mainly uh, the end chart uh, in Jenkins CI org, we didn't pursue uh, this modification at the org level. OK. Makes sense. Thanks. No question? Okay, last done tasks, uh, GSOC plugin ill scoring system. So as part of the GSOC project, there is one of the project this year uh, that Adrien is uh, monitoring. Um, he was asking to create a repository, expect upcoming uh, resource request to create part of infrastructure to support that project in the future. Thanks uh, Hervé for taking care of this one. Any question? Okay, time to check the work in progress, folks. So first one, uh, Stefan and I in pair, but uh, driven by Stefan, we are working on migrating update center to another cloud, e.g. Oracle Cloud, which involves creating a new machine with Terraform on the new Terraform project with the data volume. We are working on how to convert the kind of machines and then that machine will be added and then we will do a we will split the traffic once ready between both after tour full test. And if everything goes, we can absolutely move everything to Oracle. Uh, the reason is because we are consuming between three to 5K per month on bandwidth on AWS, mostly caused by that service. And if we switch to Update Center on Oracle, we should be less than 1K. So that's quite the, quite the cheap bandwidth. Uh, no blockers. Uh, we are trying to dig the Terraform Oracle provider, which is not the easiest one. Thanks, uh, Stefan, for the work on that part. So is that OK to continue for next iteration for that task, Stefan? Yes, of course. That maps with the priority, given the need we, we have for money. Digital Ocean. Um, Hervé and I have a, should meet later today, the team. We have created a note on HackMD uh, for that topic. Uh, Hervé, can I ask you to add the HackMD link inside the issue? I forgot to do it yesterday. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, the goal is we cover different options. Uh, how much if we keep the same burn rate that we add, that should be 1K per month. So that means asking for, if it's a sponsorship for one year, that will mean uh, 12K to, to use on their cloud. We considered also other alternatives instead of the Kubernetes cluster. So either we could put limit on the cluster to reduce the amount. We want to discuss with them the fact that we could gain almost 400K per month if we were able to have a scale up, scale down to zero, which is not the case technically speaking. So that's the topic we want to bring to them. 
And then based on the amount of money they are prepared to give, we could also set up mirrors for Jenkins managed by ourselves because they have data centers in Singapore and India in Bangalore. And that, that wouldn't cost too much. That will be a way, even with the bandwidth. And um, also we could use dynamic ephemeral virtual machines. They only support Linux out of the box, but still we could use all the Docker builds on Infra CI, all the machine for trusted CI. We could use totally different setups or clouds than CI Jenkins IO to split the cost. So we have different options with different level of cost measurements. We'll see uh, how they feel about continuing. The proposal is to ask the same, uh, the same sponsorship uh, burn rate, aka uh, 1K per month. That's already a lot in a sponsor. It's a bit more than what they propose initially. It's, a, it's an increase for them. So we might want to them prepare to write more blog posts or things about their setups. Docker Hub rate limiting, I should have asked an answer. I didn't, so I'm gonna send an email to the open source program, uh, the person in charge of that program. Looks like they are really, really busy. Um, and also sending an official email on the mailing will allow me to share most of the information with the rest of the team, e.g. you. So we will have something written that we could reuse in the future. So that should be same uh, next iteration. Upgrade to Kubernetes 1.20, Stefan, what is the status? Um, I did upgrade the Kubernetes client, kubectl client, and uh, I started the upgrade on the digital SM. And uh, I'm right there. Is it done or? No, it's not done. It's a work in progress. Are you sure? I think we merged something on Terraform. Uh oh, okay. Okay, sure. so can can you take care of checking that issue? Uh, let me ask, and are you going to work on that topic on the next iteration on one of the other clusters or won't? Yes, I hope so. Okay. Uh, Auto notify people based on service routing rules. Hervé, last iteration for you. You still have one week to, yeah. to continue working on it. So as uh, as I said last week, uh, we should remove it from the infra milestone. Okay. Of course, if you find some time, don't hesitate to. Oh. Okay, I need to remove it. Okay. Clear milestone. Thanks. Provide PowerShell on the Windows Docker image used on ACI. Um, no, yep. Nothing has been done, but uh, the more I think about it, the more I think I sh we should test for the presence of PowerShell mm -hmm. or uh, PWSH executable uh, file. Come on. Okay. Um, I think we should raise an issue on the plugin in charge of implementing PowerShell step because. As for today, there are two keywords on Windows. You have PWSH and PowerShell. Um, yeah. As Hervé said, that could be really a great help to the end user if Jenkins could be able to detect the one to check. Because either you have one or the other. And PWSH oh. is for smaller distros or older version of PowerShell, no, right? No, it's the control. It's the, the opposite. It's the, it's the opposite. I think uh, even uh, PWSI sh should be uh, put in front in documentation on everything. I don't know. I'm not sure, okay. but I think uh, I think it's more the PowerShell cores and the Windows PowerShell version. So it's okay. it's uh, the last version of PowerShell, while the okay. PowerShell, uh, the full PowerShell uh, command, call uh, PowerShell. Uh, Version uh, less than six. Okay, so um, definitely it's not, a topic. It's not uh, less than six, but uh, you see PWSH call PowerShell six and more. Okay, so clearly, definitely a topic to open on the community 
because that's a feature on the pipeline uh, plugin really important for that. Uh, there isn't any action required for infrastructure. So if it's okay, we will close that issue here. I'm I mean, not sure there isn't anything to do. What Almost problem sides. would it solve? Um, not a problem, but uh, in our shared pipeline library, we are co mm -hmm. always calling with our shell command. Okay. While it can, it might not be available on some of our machine. Okay, so um, it's working today, so it's available. That might disappear if I understand your explanation. But that issue it was about on the a, the Docker Windows image used yeah. on ACI. Uh, um, PowerShell is, pr is uh, present on this image, but it's called uh, PWSH. Yes, but it works with the keyword yeah. PowerShell. No? Yes. No, no, it doesn't work with the keyword okay. PowerShell. You have to use PWSH in your pipeline if you want to call PowerShell on this Docker image. Okay. So, okay. So, so can I ask you to add a command at the end of the issue explaining the next action, meaning we should at least update our shell library to use yep. PWSH <laughs> or B80, which most of the others are doing, depends on. Um, the initial problem that uh, raised that issue uh, that was uh, uh, re something that Jesse and James Nord were blocked on and they use B80 instead of PowerShell. That solved their issue. That's why the initial reason of that issue is not valid anymore. However, as Hervé explained, there is something to do for the infrastructure. Yeah, we were, we were searching for PowerShell and it's not the okay. solution. Can you add the command just to explain and then someone can take it? So, so yep, sorry. Is it is it worthwhile having nano server based images if it doesn't include PowerShell? Should we just acknowledge we're it, not going to? It it includes PowerShell, oh, it but does. it's not called PowerShell dot exe. It's called uh, uh, PWSH dot exe, and it's a greater version than the one on Windows Server Core, which is called PowerShell dot exe. I see. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the clarity. That, that, that was a tricky one, honestly. <laughs> but that's why we could help because if we add that issue, some user on the Jenkins community and Jenkins user will have that issue soon. So better to act now uh, and to raise that topic on the community side. Another topic, uh, last one currently work in progress, evaluate retry to improve the stability of the builds. Uh, so thanks Hervé for raising this one. Um, the core of that request is that Jesse worked in some time on the behavior of the pipeline that will retry a stage or a full pipeline if for in some case the pipeline fails because of the, an agent failure. The use case is for spot instances. When we have a spot virtual machine, it can be reclaimed in less than one minute and the agent machine is stopped and removed, which means there is no way to keep this, to uh, risk to have the same state. So the pipeline have to know the reason of why it failed. And when we detect such error, then it should be retried automatically one, two, eventually three. Because you don't want developer having to watch if, oh, my build failed, the reason is because of the agent, then I trigger new build manually not mentioning the issues we have of plugin maintainer that don't have access to CI Jenkins IO, or they have access, but they cannot click the, the build the now button. Also, it's a use case for some Kubernetes cases when in some case, the agent has been removed. This set of features should solve the issue we have almost every time we redeploy your controller and restart it. If there are some builds running, they failed to continue a restart because of the reason. Um, so Jesse is working on that. That's an open source work. And we have started and deployed that work to InfraCI this morning earlier. The goal is to try more and more use cases. So we'll check with Jesse that will continue next week. 
The target is CI Jenkins SIO, but we don't want to release this pipeline because that these are the pipeline plugins. So if we release that and it breaks, it can be sensitive. So we propose the help to Jesse. So we start on Afra CI. If it works, then we can extend the area of testing. The challenge is that we need real life use case. We cannot test on some isolated environment that just run a kind of ephemeral pipeline that does not map the reality of end users. So that's why we still have to go to production really soon. And we will install the pipeline plugins in incremental build, meaning from a pull request not released yet, on CI Jenkins at the moment on time, because we need feedbacks on that core behavior because that could impact a lot of users. So right now we're using um, a, a version of the plugins pipeline uh, that is uh, under development as a yes. beta tester on infra. Exactly. Good. You correctly Great. understand. So nifty trick that Jesse and I uh, discovered, we didn't know it was possible. You can specify instead of the version the plugin txt, you can specify an URL to a plugin or a version from incremental. You have different way. Awesome. That's really, really practical. So thanks a lot, Jesse and Hervé for working on that part. Uh, LP. Uh, yes. He mentioned reason discussed there, but I reason. Don't, I, it's uh, it's last uh, his last comments. I don't Which see the reason. This one, just under your mouse. Yep. I don't know oh, sorry. how, what are these reasons or where to find them. Okay, I propose we discuss that after the meeting because yep. it's it, it's part of the topic. The goal now is to say, okay, uh, we okay. have this, which means the takeaway for all of us, infra CI might be failing some build or might have weird behavior when ready playing new version of uh, Jenkins or plugins. If we saw that, we have to uh, audit these uh, changes on that issue. Good for everyone? Yes. Okay, so one last step. Um, new topics. We have quite some, so that we will be quite busy. Um, I want, why? I'm trying to sort the issues on the milestone, but it looks like I can't. Uh, first one, Maven 386 upgrade campaign. Uh, thanks, Hervé for and Basil for raising that one. Um, so we were blocking the Maven updates because 3.8.5 was uh, having issue. Basil confirmed that we don't have that issue anymore. So we should be able to include the new 3.8.6. However, we had uh, Daniel that asked for waiting before the staging of the security release. So that's why I added quickly a comment yesterday. However, I'm sorry for blocking that because otherwise uh, you did good and we should have proceed as soon as possible. There is no emergency on doing that, but still it's important to do it soon. So I propose that we move that issue on the next week milestone. And we wait for Daniel and Vadek, or at least someone from the security team, to tell us that we can go away, uh, go uh, for that update, just to be sure we don't put the security risk in danger. Looks good for everyone. That sounds good to me. And I can confirm I'm using Maven 3.8.6 in my cluster successfully. So when we finally do get to that point, and now we've got the transition to Java 11 is for the weekly June 28th. So that's one week after the LTS. And that would probably be a good time. If not before then, that's already, that's a good time to be switched to Maven 3.8.6. Cool. Thanks for confirming. So I've put that issue on next week, the Maven 3.8.6, because uh, we will have to obtain it on different areas. Another topic that came back, James opened an issue asking us to integrate, to enable again, something that existed years ago, where Jira is connected to GitHub. So there is a kind of automatic mechanism to reference issues in Jira with pull requests. I don't remember exactly. 
I tend to be scared by Jira. Uh, that's an integration to be installed based on the discussion and the memory uh, lay, memo, trip to memory lane, I ask Daniel, Tim and Olivier. Um, we should be able to do it. However, we might have an issue regarding rate limit on the API, GitHub API. First point, rate limit usually on GitHub means you need to use a GitHub app to benefit from the version four of the API. But the GitHub app to integrate Jira with GitHub is only for uh, Atlassian Cloud users, which we are not. And we cannot move our Jira instance to Atlassian Cloud because of the LDAP, not supported on cloud. So we are condemned to use the old method with a technical GitHub user that has the right to write everywhere. That's not ideal in terms of security, but we don't have any solution. And as Tim said, we should have a dedicated Jira user because it was the Jenkins infra bot uh, years before or Jenkins bot, and it was shared with other usages. So not only we were able to raise quickly to, to get the limits. So that's why Tim suggests to have a dedicated account just for that integration. So it only uh, uh, used the rate, uh, rate limit only for Jira and GitHub. So yeah, um, is there someone volunteering for that one? Should I do it? We can pair, but that's a user request that will help a lot of developers. I understand the, uh, the project management could be eased for, for them. I have a silly question, but is that not the same thing than the, the GitHub issues? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, That's the uh, same feature, but on Jira. Yeah. Okay. Because, because GitHub issues are already integrated in GitHub. Yes, but Jira. Jira issues yeah. are not mm. integrated with GitHub by default. And using uh, Jira for uh, Jenkins core is still a requirement and will stay, I think. Oh, that's for the core. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because we so, did import our Jira in, in GitHub. Uh, for the issue, infra project. But for the infra, not of right. course. Sorry. But Jenkins Sorry. core and um, a lot of plugins are using that project security right. as right. well. And so there is that dissonance between things in GitHub and things in Jira that will always be kind of a mess. Migrating that project will mean migrating, if you see the ID numbers, that's a lot of issues. And also, um, yeah. Hervé and I are on the, the team, uh, the GitHub strong feeling yeah. team. And some people are strong feeling about Jira. And oh, yeah. these teams and will it's... never be able to, to go to consensus. Uh, GitHub issue is not oh. that mm -hmm. level of Jira. Jira. There are function in Jira which you can't really I don't, reproduce. I don't mean to, to hurt feelings and to fight between Jira and GitHub stuff. It's just, I didn't realize that they were using Jira in okay. the core and plugins, that's all. The takeaway is that there are two or many more different use cases and Jira or GitHub issue alone cannot fulfill all the use cases. So two tools for different cases and we need both. That's what ends the integration request. Yeah. Okay. So unless someone is interested, I've put it on my name. Mention yourself or assign, co-assign yourself if you are interested you in doing so. Put me with you if you want. Yep. Uh, Mark, you opened an issue yeah. about the CPU-Z uh, agent that was... Yeah. Uh, that yep, that one you can assign to me, Damien, if you're welcome to, if you're willing to, or I'll assign it to me because I think it's one I need to get the runbook updated so that we can do it. There is no reason for us to 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 put it on anybody else. There, I inter interact with IBM. I just need to be sure that I describe how this works, and okay. then we can consider your suggestion. I'm not a puppet expert. I know you had suggested, gee, should we puppetize this thing? Mm -hmm. And for my initial was, I just want to get it online as cheap and quick as possible because it's a one-off and will probably always be a one-off given, given how expensive it is that they donate a Z series to us at all. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that uh, once you have an initial access as a one human, the advantage is that then 
by having puppets that will be able to make auditable if we need to install some change at large scale, if we right. want to configure Maven Java following the rest of our updates. And also it will avoid everyone on the team to be able to maintain an, uh, that machine in the future if we need it. So that that's the reason. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, if you want, we can try. I understand that it wasn't done because there weren't any package back in the days. Um, but it sounds like Puppet, uh, some people were uh, are using Puppet on CentOS Linux on that kind of CPU. So I assume that the game install of the Puppet agent should be able. So I would be interested to try it. So, so in terms of relative priorities, I'm, I'm assuming that this is much lower value than most of the other things you're working on in terms of automating or yes. helping automate. Okay, good. Correct. Super. So thanks for raising the issue. Um, I've started the Ubuntu 2204 uh, upgrade campaign uh, as a reaction of last week uh, weekly release. Um, that means we will have some consequences in particular OpenSSL curl and CSR were updated, which means we might have issues on some of our missions. So we have to keep track uh, of that. Um, that should be interesting on some machines, but yeah, uh, be careful. So my proposal is that we don't start working on that yet. We have Kubernetes, we have updates on Tor to migrate and Kubernetes to finish uh, uh, migrating or Terraform managing. Is there any voice not agreeing with that pro priority proposal? Okay. Uh, I think that's all. That's already a pretty pack week. Um, I might take, if I find the elements, some minor tasks on that back burner, but I don't see other highly prior, do you? I do not. Okay. I think the getting ready for the upcoming release, the 22nd of the security release, and then the the Java 11 transition, the 28th are both, both should be our, our key focus to be sure that we don't block anything on those. Absolutely. Top priority, uh, enabling the upcoming release. Second priority, migrating update center to Oracle so we can decrease our cost in AWS. Right. Okay, is there any question, things unclear? Topics you will want to, br to bring? The repair of Datadog that we just broke is oh, good point. outside of that. Uh, yes, so that's why I used an announcement about the outage. Right after that uh, meeting, we will open an issue because the outage yesterday did not justify an issue. It was punctual. Today it justifies, so we will do it. Um, Stefan and I try to disable pager duty since the system was down and there is nothing we can do about. So paging the person and page duty made no sense. And while trying to disable the what we understood would have been the correct data agent element, uh, now page duty is alerting us with more alerts. So we have to better understand how it works and fix it. That's part of a knowledge sharing session we started last Friday about which component on Datadog is doing what. We cooked a lot of issues to be treated, but. We're going there. Thanks, uh, Stefan. Good point. Good reminder. You're welcome. As a general matter, I propose the following improvement. If we have to open an, an issue on status Jenkins IO, we should all expect each other to open a help desk issue associated with the link on the message. Uh, sometimes it's in, you open the issue on status to communicate, especially the weekend or during night, of course. But then uh, when we are back on working hour, the rest of the team should start an help desk or the person in charge of uh, yeah, on duty. Uh, I think we all forgot to create one quite regularly. So that's not, I'm not pointing finger and I don't say it's a bad thing. It's just, I'm just saying we, we could improve in the future because we would have an audit log and we won't forget elements such as this one, like Stefan reminded us. Hervé, can you do something to have a, a, a help desk issue that uh, 
with the correct label will trigger automatically uh, a new uh, status.jenkins.io uh, issue. Uh, yeah, I have something uh, like that uh, planned, but... Uh... Could be awesome. So, that. Stefan, can you open an Elbesk issue describing what you expect? Oh. And, and I it's... will add a, a label uh, a status <laughs> check for you, oh, just to test. Just describe, the it's a feature request. Just uh, please write this down. Writing things down allows us to share the knowledge because there are people that cannot attend or who don't want to attend but can still contribute. So that's why we need to write on oh, yeah. things. All right. You, you can also look at my random, random uh, issue <laughs> and yeah. comment uh, there, and we can, can uh, write a proper issue, right? Yeah. So, so Damien, that brings a question for me. This System 390 thing, should I flag that somehow on status.jenkins.io? And likewise, the PowerPC that's Currently, the agent is offline. Should this be in status.jenkins.io, or is this too, 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 too questionable relevance to bother people with it on status.jenkins.io? Do you have a sense of should I should I have should I have updated status.jenkins.io to show that the agent is offline? Are there a unique job running on it? Uh, yes, well, yes, there are, but I I modified the job definition so that they're no longer dependent on that. So I would say, who will be bothered by these machines being offline except the five of us? No one. So if it's okay for you, then we don't need to bother for these two machines. The rule of thumb will be, if we open an issue on status Jenkins.io, it's because someone outside the infra team will be bothered. Okay, good, good. I like that guidance. That's a, that's a good guiding principle. Thank you. Is that, is that a clear one that everyone agrees with? Or do you have? I, I think that makes sense. Status.jenkins.io is a, a way to share status with other people. So yeah, I like that. So that's all for me. Are there other topics that we forgot that you want to bring, discuss? Cool, so now you have to stop speaking until next week then. <laughs> Thanks everyone That's for fun. the huge work you all did and for the help. Take care and see you next week.